Hi everyone and welcome to Adobe APAC Live. I'm really excited to be here this afternoon with this creative duo. Um, thank you all for being here also. If you're new to Adobe APAC Live, uh, we have a chat room that you can join. Um, and so for the next hour, you can interact with us. Um, you can ask questions of our magnificent guests um, who will have some very considered answers prepared, <laughs> ready for you all. Um, so you can log in using your Adobe ID, um, so the Adobe ID that you would use for your Creative Cloud. Um, and if you don't have an account, uh, you can sign up very quickly and for free. Um, but I'd like to introduce our awesome guests, um, Chloe and Andrew. How are you Hi. going? Hi. Hi, guys. Nice to be here. Welcome. We're we good. made it. We've, we made, we it. made it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're all, we're all set. There you go. We're here. Um, so it's the first time we've had two people on because mm. you are a creative duo. We are two we are. but one. Two but one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. There's been uh, songs made about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, we're kind of like work husband and wife in right. a way. Yes. We work as a pair at TBWA Sydney, Great. which is an ad agency. And so, yeah, I'm a copywriter. Andrew's an art director. I draw pictures, she does words. Yeah. Wow. But Perfect. we both think Business of ideas. Marriage. Ideas together. That's yeah. it. That's great. We'll talk a little bit about that. But um, so everyone out there is ready for what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about passion projects. Yeah. Cool. And side hustles. Yes. Um, so you guys work in a busy advertising agency, fast paced, lots of ideas, mm -hmm. lots of late nights. And then somehow within, within that time, you find the time and energy to run side projects, yeah. Yeah. which is pretty cool. Where does that energy come from? I guess like we both sort of have ADHD with right. side projects. Yeah. Like we're constantly creating stuff and wanting to be creative. And so, you know, outside of work, if we've got ideas that we think of and we're super passionate about that mm. isn't right for something at work, then we absolutely pursue that. And right. it's just something we've always done. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Passion, yeah. passion is the key word there. Yeah. I guess we, we love to be creative all the time. So yeah. mm. even after work, you know, creativity doesn't just stop after advertising. We can... You could be creative on the train home, so... You don't switch off. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, uh, like, maybe explain kind of what a day in the life of a creative duo. So we might have some people out there that have a traditional kind of graphic design mm -hmm. background, digital design, something like that. But kind of explain how it works working together um, in, in a typical day. Yeah, so yeah. a day in the life of a creative team um, is our job is to solve problems for brands with creative solutions. So... What me and Chloe would do every day is we'd get a, a brief from a brand and with a, an objective and then we'd kind of go away and like what's a really cool creative idea that we can come up with that solves this problem. So we usually like to kind of, you know, type up ideas or like we say, um, brain, brain, dump. brain dump ideas onto a page and, and then we'll, we'll kind of regroup during the day and, you know, Chloe will share what she's got, I'll share and idea just I've got. collaborate. And then we just collaborate. Mm -hmm. The ones that, you know, if it's a good idea, we'll know. It'll jump out to us. So we'll kind of pick the ones that we think are really uh, good and have potential. And then, I guess, Chloe will apply her copy skills and I'll apply my art directing skills and that's how we execute and bring the idea to life. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. That very well. Thank you. Well, yes, very well said. Thank you. Um, yes. So shout out to a couple of people in the chat room. Um, thanks for saying hi. Lisa M, Seth M, um, Daniel C. Um, it's nice to have you guys join. Um, so if you're just tuning in as well, uh, a couple of minutes late, then you can jump in, sign in with your Adobe ID, have a chat to ask. Feel free to ask questions at any point. Um, and, you know, we'll pass it on to the, to the team. Chat. Yeah. We'll have a good chat. Um, but we're going uh, we're gonna to talk about three projects. Um, so we're going to talk about Swipe Rights campaign, yeah. mm -hmm. um, Wise Miles mm -hmm. as well, and then something that's happened, you know, um, some more recent stuff, so Polar Melts yes. as well, which is really, really cool. Um, before we get kind of stuck into that, mm -hmm. where did you two meet originally? Because you didn't meet at TVWA. No. no. You, you met off campus. We met, well, kind of on campus, right. but yeah. not working at TVWA. Yes. Right. So we uh, met during awards school, which is sort of the ad industry's course for people wanting to get into it. So it's a 12-week course that happens after work, like at night, <clears throat> and basically you get put in a group that's tutored mm. by an agency in Sydney. And so we were in a tutorial mm. at TBWA. And so we sort of did the course and they really liked us, so they put us together, kind of like an arranged marriage. Arranged marriage, yes. yeah. And then we got hired out of that and we've been there like four years now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, she's right. She's right. That That's exactly great. What and, yeah. and then before then, so Andrew, you have a graphic design background or communication design. Yeah, I, I studied visual communication for three years at university. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as I finished that, I, whilst I was studying, I was also a full-time musician. I'd like to pretend I was. Mm -hmm. um, but exit I was, row, look I was, it up. Yeah, exit row, look up the band. Um, we used to 
so we're an originals band, so I was quite involved in like writing music. And at the same time, after uni, I was doing a lot of graphic design for a lot of Australian Idol and X Factor runner-ups, um, which was interesting. Got to meet a lot of interesting characters. Mm. Shannon Noll. Shannon Noll. Um, all Might those, be in the chat. All those superstars, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was kind of interesting, being in like design and music. And then um, I got introduced to the world of advertising and fell in love with the idea of being a creative in terms of coming up with ideas and just, you know, you, could, you know, one day you could come up with an idea for film or print or just whatever you want. An idea is an idea, and I kind of love that concept. So I um, discovered award school, mm. um, and then that's how I met Chloe, and the rest is history. Mm. Here we are. Yeah, my story's not as cool. Um, I studied media and marketing at uni mm -hmm. and just sort of thought that I wanted to be a journalist for a bit. And then I was in a lecture about advertising and I was like, oh, my God, that's what I want to do. Mm. And so, yeah, got my foot in the door as a strategist at an agency here in Sydney and saw what the creatives were doing. I was just really excited by that. And so then I found out about award school. Mm. Got in, and yeah, the rest is history. So what I do you said. think? Of, yeah, <laughs> just sorry. <laughs> finish each other's sandwiches. Um, what do you think it was about advertising that you that you saw that you that attracted you to it? I think like I've always been passionate about creating some sort of positive change in the world, and advertising for me. Originally, I was interested in law because I was sort of raised going to a nerdy high school that that was the way that you can create change like through being a lawyer and changing laws but I just sort of realized that being creative you can do that just as easily and mm. just sort of creating ideas that motivate people and change behavior and that sort of thing so yeah that's why I was attracted to advertising yeah because I saw that you got I found in my research you got quite a high ATAR as well oh. so you probably could have done pretty much whatever you want <laughs> well yeah no I was actually going to enroll in law yeah. but then disappointed everyone by doing advertising. Welcome to the world of advertising, <laughs> the rest of us. Um, that's fantastic. So um, so maybe we'll jump into this first project. Yeah. Sure. Really quick. Oh. What do you think? So so this is the Swipe Rights project, yeah. which um, we've been really across here at Adobe because this is how we discovered yeah. you guys. Um, this has actually been part of the Create With Purpose campaign. Uh, those of you at home that may have listened uh, in our last live stream, Joy Lee was also part <coughs> of that campaign. Yeah. Um, so we're double dipping with you guys. Double Get, dipping. Yeah, getting you guys in because it's such an awesome campaign. It's what uh, made us aware of, of you two yeah. um, as this amazing duo. So for those who haven't seen it, can you explain like what this, what this project was all about? Do you uh, start? Uh, yeah, I can start. So... I guess during the that whole period where there's a lot of tension about marriage equality. Mm. Um, about 18 months ago. Yeah, it was about 18 months ago. Um, every day there was like a headline or something was happening. There was a lot of debate. Yeah, a lot of debate. And we kind of wanted to be, you know, re reactive to that and kind of come up with an idea that can, I guess, show our support yeah. for it. And let us contribute to the conversation. And just let us contribute and try to get people on board. So Even if it's just in a small way. Yeah. So we just kind of had this like really simple thought, like what if we actually turned a Tinder profile into a petition that if you swipe right, you're swiping in support for equal marriage rights. Mm. And so by creating this profile and everyone that swiped right, all their names got added to this list. And we just thought, you know, it was a really simple and interesting idea, but it also kind of took a platform like Tinder, which is, you know, primarily, primarily a dating um, uh, app, but we actually turned it, we actually use it in a very interesting way, which is making it a petition. Mm. Yeah. So kind of breaking the rules of Tinder a bit, yeah. which we thought was really cool. And what was awesome was that it all happened so fast. Like we thought mm. of the idea in the morning and we're like, let's do this. Mm. Andrew created this amazing profile, which was designed like beautifully. And then we put it on Tinder and then it just sort of like took a life of its own. Like yeah. overnight, there were over a thousand or so <coughs> matches. And so we were like, okay, this is awesome. Like it's working. Um, so then we reached out to Get Up, which is an activist organization. And they basically said like the petition that we were creating through the matches, mm. they would use as like their petition to like, you know, lobby. And, and they can amplify yeah. that yeah, message, yeah. right? And they yeah. amplified it and it just sort of gave it more credibility than getting on board. Mm. So, yep. yeah, so we it got to the point where we had over 10,000 matches and then Mardi Gras was coming up. And so we thought, how could we do something with all these names in a way that was really fun and sort of let us contribute to Mardi Gras? Yeah. So we created this flag 
Right. Which and we had, actually have the flag. We have the here flag in the, studio, in the which room. Is pretty cool. And Andrew, so, he'll talk about the process. <laughs> it was a process getting so, every name on here. So with the flag, and actually, if you go back to how we use the profile, mm. um, to get all those matches and all those names, there was it was manual. A tremendous amount of me swiping right early every day. Mm. I mean, I'm talk I'm talking about swiping right. On the way to the train, while I'm at work, in during, bed with your wife, in bed with my wife, right? Who was well, aware that you were running this? Who campaign? was there? Right. She, yeah, it, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't the best thing to do in front of your wife, but she got the idea, which is good. Um, it's mandatory. Yeah. Yeah. I, had to, I, had to, I had to explain what I was doing. Yeah, um, but it was constantly swiping so there was a lot of manual labor into getting all these names mm. and a very sore thumb by the end of it and then with those names i'll see if i can get up the the document now and while you're bringing that up we actually have a question from uh, phoebe e uh, is award school the only way to get into advertising great question i i I don't think it is. It isn't the only way, but it makes it a lot easier for, for a creative. For a creative, right? The good thing about award school is, um, it's like it is like a crash course, but the be the benefit of it is that you get a portfolio at the end of it. Yeah. So you you have all, you know twelve weeks uh, worth of projects, and and you know that's kind of what, what you use you to kind of reach out to agencies. Yeah. And show. But I wouldn't say it's it, not the only way, but it makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier. Like right. a lot of the agencies tutor awards school with the intention of hiring a junior team out yeah. of their class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pro tip. Pro tip. Yeah. So, you so if yeah. you don't get it, I mean, I think they only select like a hundred students. Or something. Yeah. yeah. But if you don't get in, it's not the end of the world. Just if you love coming up with ideas, just put those yeah. ideas on a, on a website or, or draw them up or however you want to do them and um, just approach agencies and just show them. Um, yeah. And if you're, good at, if you're good at ideas, I'm sure they'll, you know, you might get an email back. But at World School definitely helps. Good, yeah. good advice. Yeah, continue to hustle. Just which hustle. Might be, might be this thread that we pull. Um, thank you, Phoebe, for the question. Feel free to Thanks, ask, ask questions, guys, from the audience. Seth M um, might be an in-joke. They, they said you set up arranged marriages as well, so be prepared. I don't know if that's an in-joke. <laughs> um, sure. Let's, let's take it as it is. So yeah, back, with, <laughs> back with the Create With, uh, create with Purpose campaign, um, swipe, swipe right. So, yeah, so what do we have here? Up on screen is actually around 10,000 names, which I had to actually scroll down through tinder and then hand type all into a word There's a lot document. of scrolling involved in this project a lot of scrolling a lot of weird names a lot of people <laughs> questioning weird what names. i'm doing um yeah there's a weird one there like th that was a tricky thing you get all, you, some profiles had like really odd names and they were typed in like weird fonts so i had to like find out how to type those fonts into a Word document so then I could copy paste them into Illustrator. So and you learn about making umlauts on the keyboard yeah, really fast yeah. and things so like that. So from there we got all the names and then um, we just dropped it into an Illustrator file which is uh, I guess how we kind of uh, you know created the flag so all the names are kind of laid out and then I made sure that the font that I picked was legible, played with the kerning to make sure if you know if you're looking up close you can read the names it's all, all in there. Zoom right in there. Yeah, but obviously when you're looking at a far, it's it's quite clear that it's it's the rainbow flag. Mm. Um, so where, where was this originally designed for? Was it designed to be a digital piece, or was it just immediately we're going to make the flag? This so we're was print no. This? Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this was <laughs> yeah purely for the flag. With, with the whole campaign, the idea, like as much as we love the the Tinder profile and what the success was having on there, um, we just thought like you know. The idea can be bigger if we wanted to. It was, you know, mm. we thought, how? What's another space we can take it to? Outside? Especially with Mardi Gras yeah. coming up, it was it, sort of reactive. It, right it, it kind of made sense, to like, just to why don't we just put all their names in a flag and almost like pay tribute to everyone that swipe right, but also bring our idea to life in the real world, in the physical world. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that was the whole thought behind that. And it was really good. Like people, people on the day loved it. We ended up putting a GoPro at the top of it, so. You know, we captured on footage and people's reactions, and a lot of people from the who saw the profile on swipe right saw the flag, and they're yeah. like trying to find their names on it. It's so. funny how many friends would come to me saying that they saw the profile on Tinder. Yeah, right. Which says, and you're like, oh wow, you're yeah. single. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, didn't know you're single. single yeah, but in terms of like using Adobe, the Illustrator, it, it, it was quite a simple task. Just you know, putting all those names in, making sure I can, I, I can color match it to the flag. Obviously, outlining all those um, names just so it was better for the printing process. You don't um, want to give your printer a heart attack. Yeah, 
yeah, there was a lot of lagging and delays when trying to print this, but oh uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's simple, but it's true to the idea, which is why we liked it. It was a great mm. extension of it. Yeah. Yeah. And how quick did have from from conception to kind of having a printed flag and and sort of physically being there and having people looking at their names? Mm -hmm. How long did that whole process take? Do you think from the profile to the flag or just the flag? Yeah. The whole thing. The whole, the whole thing, thing, I guess. Yeah. I'd say like two months, maybe. About about two months. We kind of did the profile. Um, literally, we had the profile up in a day. Yeah. Mm. Within we, a week, we had around ten thousand. Within a week, we had. Tons of because some matches. news outlets picked it up and wrote about it, which right. Like yeah, it got helped. a bit, it got a bit of PR, which which helped. Um, so we kind of almost like spent a week collecting the names and, and then all that stuff, and then you know whilst all the matching was going on, and maybe second or third week, we were just like you know let's do the flag and then and then it was just a matter of waiting for Mardi Gras. Yeah, and then we had the flag ready. Then yeah, yeah. It was just waiting for the Mardi Gras to come around. So yeah. probably a month. Yeah. A lot, I'd say. yeah. So it's like super quick, right? It's and super quick. And how important do you think, just going back to the swipe right, so maybe we could bring up that um, design again, um, the actual swipe right one, uh, yeah. just on your laptop. So that you've got that there. Um, so that was turned around in like 24 hours, and then you've got, you know, yeah. 10,000 people interacting with it. How important is it to be that reactionary and work that quickly? on an idea like this? In this case, it was really important because it was based on stuff that was happening in the news, yeah, like at that right. time. When you, because people were talking about it, they talked we about this. We had to do yeah. it. Yeah. Because, yeah, just sort of like ride the wave of like what was happening in the news. It was a matter of like, either we did it in mm. a couple of days or we just didn't bother. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So we, we needed to make sure that we got it out there properly, but as well, we, we one thing we needed to make sure is that when you come across the profile, it's clear what the idea is. Yeah. Mm. Um, Especially for all those creeps out there who just swipe without looking. We wanted to make sure when they see ours, they go, okay, what's this? This is interesting. Something a little bit different. Yeah, something yeah. a bit different. And then, you know, just making sure like the, the, the type was legible. We had that icon of the of the finger swiping with the rainbow behind it. It's just we wanted to clearly communicate what it is mm. and make it feel fun, likeable. And um, it worked. It got, over there it says over 11,000, but I think it got up to 12,000. Yeah. We had like a nice little write up explaining what it's for and what we're doing, right. yeah. which is where Chloe came in. Um, so, yeah. yeah. It was just awesome. Yeah, it it was just sort of took a life of its own. Like, I guess being mm. the way it worked, like just living on Tinder, people swiping right, it was just so easy. Yeah. Mm. And it, it, this was all done on Photoshop, like, uh, yeah, fairly quick, you know what I mean? Like, we, we tried to be as reactive as we can with pop as we could be possible. Obviously, you want you wanted to, we wanted people to look at it and understand what it was for. It was for marriage equality. So. Yeah. Yeah. A um, rainbow helps. Thumb stop, thumb the rainbow helps, com yeah. What do we say? Thumb stopping content. Well, this isn't thumb stopping, you're swiping. Swipe stop. Well, thumb engaging content. Thumb engaging. Thumb engaging. Yeah, thank you. That's good. Engagement. <laughs> Everything's working really well. Um, so there's, uh, if you Google, actually just Google create with purpose as well, um, you, you can see that whole campaign. So we've kind of yeah. we've done a bit of a <clears throat> deep dive into there, which we, which we won't go through today because we're going to talk about a couple of other projects as well. Yeah. Um, but you at home, you can check that out um, right now. And so if you are, if you are, you know, recently joining us here, you can log into the chat room and ask us questions using your Adobe ID. So don't be shy. Um, come say hi. I did, didn't mean that to ramp that really, that really well. <laughs> well done. Um, so let's talk about uh, another project. So that's, that's a project that kind of has has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. Because yes. success. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the vote was for yes. So congratulations on being part of that. Um, but then now we move on to sort of the next two are a little bit more live. So yeah. they're a little bit more raw, which I which yeah. I'm really excited to talk about. Yeah. Um, because this is kind of the you know in the trenches, like you're you're doing this stuff it's right ongoing. now. It's ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We're gonna check out some happening. raw projects. Um, which is Wise Miles. Wise Miles. Wise yeah. Miles. So Wise. Miles Miles is a podcast that we've been doing for a year now. About a it's year. It's been in the works. It's, it's been for on a year. and off. Um, yeah, but mm -hmm. we're we're trying to get back yeah. into it. And so basically, the idea came about as after we were spending a lot of late nights in the office, and you know, getting Ubers home. We were both living kind of far away from the office last year, and so we were having all these super interesting chats with the Uber drivers because you know, when you're in the car for like 30 minutes, you've got to commit to the convo. Right. Yeah. And so it's like an elevator pitch. Literally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Except the opposite. The opposite of that, um, right. So, yeah, so we were just having all these ridiculous conversations with the drivers because they were just so funny and interesting. Mm. And it just sort of got to the point where we were like, we need to record this and let other people hear it. So we thought of this idea called Wise Miles, where cool. the idea is we would get in the Uber and just sort of say, we'll give you a five-star rating if you give us one piece of life advice, which we would then unpack throughout the trip. And it's it, a hostage situation. Literally <laughs> a hostage situation. And we would record it and then put an intro and an outro and then that's literally the podcast that like we wouldn't edit their advice or anything. Right. It was just, it was just the raw audio. Oh, so it's raw. It's raw. It wow. is as raw as it gets. And the idea is like it would last for as long as however long they spoke for. Right. So some are really short. Like one lady just said, go to Russia. Yeah, there's some pretty um, interesting ones. But then there were like really long ones about, you know, mm spend time with the people you love like blah 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 yeah so anyway we got it going it was so easy to start mm. and then andrew which he'll talk about designed this like beautiful brand yeah vibe. so wise miles i guess the the birthing of the design comes from the whole aspect of our lifestyle which was it was always at night nocturnal it, it was mm. very nocturnal advertising you're working ridiculous hours and um but it's so fun it, it's it's fun it's what we do it. we love it um, <laughs> Don't fire us. Shout um, out to everybody at TV. TV hi. By the way. hi guys. Sorry we're not there. Um, but um, yeah, so we wanted to make sure that the the look and feel communicated that kind of n journey nighttime aesthetic to it. Right. Um, so I, I might just take you to the logo first. Um, so that was kind of that was the design we kind of landed on. Um, so. If, we kind of just use like the midnight blues, the roads, and then like just a simple legible type um, to kind of communicate what it was. We thought it was playful by kind of getting the L to kind of almost be like a road or a path to communicate right. journey miles. Um, but what we thought was interesting, or actually before I go further into that, just a, a, a break, uh, breakdown of how I did the, the backdrop. Um, so the logo was done in Illustrator but this background was done in Photoshop. So simply mm. all I did for this was I just found like a nice midnight blue color that I liked. Found like some stars, like an image of stars that I really liked. Put that as a, just on top, turn the opacity down about 30%. Then I found like this image of the road, right? which kind of looked like that, but I thought that was kind of nice, really simple. And then if you put a screen, overlay on it. Might be then, a bit scary without the screen overlay. Yeah, <laughs> near the old screen overlay. And just turn the opacity down. So that was how I did the backdrop. Right. Then from there, I just saved it, dropped it into Illustrator and put the logo. Um, simple white and blue so everyone can see. Uh, but the important thing with designing this is um, obviously we wanted it to be on SoundCloud, which as you can see here it is there. So obviously I had to design that um, image at the top, which communicates the idea so when you land on here you know what it's about why is my we exchange a five-star driver rating for life advice that says what we do and then we got all these like little uh what do you call these thumbnails tiles so, little tiles. tiles so we designed them as well we thought that was just a really nice way of um kind of theming or summarizing what each uh topic was about so go to Russia, which was the one Chloe touched base on. <laughs> it's really resonated. Yeah. With it. Go it to was Russia. great. Go to, Russia. It was, go to Russia, drink vodka and just do other Russian things. Then you had some like ones like be patient, don't lose hope. So we thought we'd create these tiles and then they're kind of like um, a nice way of, you know, visually communicating yeah. what, what it's about. Um, but in saying that, SoundCloud was obviously the go-to place for a podcast, but uh, we thought... What could be really interesting uh, creatively is um, why don't we use a platform like Instagram, and who, which is obviously used for like images, visuals. And for, it, all about visuals and still a work in progress. Um, we will have more up here, but we wanted to turn an Instagram page into a podcast page, mm. just as a really simpler way of, of just hearing podcasts. And um, so you I, just sort of scroll, and then as you land on the video, the audio will start playing. Yeah, you simply right. just click on it, and then. Um, listen we, we just thought goes, yeah, yeah audio and instagram was cool yeah mm. or different yeah so we just weren't stuck to the one way of sort of bringing this idea out mm. instagram's definitely something that we're looking into yeah so yeah it's interesting how yeah so, so voice and um audio is such an important piece but so you're doing a bit of audio on a platform that's primarily yeah. 
image based. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think Instagram itself is a very creative platform. Like, a, especially a lot of creatives, they put their projects and their work up there. Mm. It's almost like a portfolio for people now. Yeah. And in a way, this is kind of like, you know, our cool way of using Instagram for audio. Um, yeah, we just thought it was really cool. Yeah, yeah nice. Um, did you have anybody, did you hop in the cab and someone said, no, I don't have any advice for you? Well, we, we quickly <laughs> found that you get into the Uber and you just know when they're not going to be down for it. So you just don't ask. Right. Yeah, you know you get some drivers that just... I'm they just, just, they're not vibing it. Just, I want to yeah. take you home, man. Stop yeah. talking. Yeah. And, uh, it's, and make that, that's the advice. Yeah, yeah. I just want to <laughs> yeah, take, you home. Want yeah. take you home. Yeah. And because they were such long car rides, you wouldn't really want to risk it and then say no and then you just have to sit with them for like 40 minutes. Oh, yes. so do you ask at the end of the trip? Well, no, at the beginning. Fortunately, So uh, you had to be confident that they would say yes. It was quite a long journey home for me. I live a, a bit further he out lives from the city. Like so I had, I had a lot of time to bond with the Uber drivers. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, your yeah. strategy was asking towards I'd spend like 15 minutes like talking to them, you know, mm. building the foundations and then I'd just uh, whip out the question. Drop it. And yeah, it was good. Uh, a lot of people were open to it. I think like naturally they, they, they give you advice anyway, so. Mm. Yeah. One guy it got too deep and meaningful and he started naming names of like X, Y's yes, and stuff. X and I'm like, we actually oh, can't wow. use this because it was that personal. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And we also made the mistake of not telling them. We yeah, were. so originally, <laughs> Andrew, right. we had the, yeah. We had, yeah. Let's, I we leave. don't want to get sued. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I guess this is a start, this is kind of the, the fail fast method, right? Yeah. It's kind of like you worked all these bugs and things out at the very early yeah. stages of a project. Yes. Yeah, this, because. Good to learn. We had this idea and like we loved it, but it was scary taking that leap of we're actually going to do this and getting into the Uber and asking to record them for a podcast. Mm. It, well, and it still is, you still get nervous. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, mm. they just love to talk. so And well, they want five-star ratings. And they do, yeah. Mm. And you're holding them hostage. Yeah. It's like, well, have you ever given anybody one star? It's like, no, they didn't engage. I actually think I have. <laughs> you have? It's brutal. Yeah. I I but I think they've given me a bad rating too because right. my rating well. is terrible. Right? <laughs> so, the rating yeah. system is for. I wonder if anybody in the chat um, has ever received any interesting advice. Yes, if you we, have any advice, we'd tell love us. It. Send us your Uber conversations, but <laughs> make sure you tell them that you're going to record them <laughs> for legal purposes. There you go. We're learning already. Yes. <laughs> She's good. Um, we kind of touched a little bit on these side projects and passion projects and, and things yeah. like that. Um, I kind of wanted to touch on how important yeah, is, is time management for you guys and how, how much time you spend on each it's know, full time really and also... Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can... Swipe rights was a lot easier because the agency threw their support behind it right. and gave us time to sort of flesh it out because it sort of had that time restraint of, you mm. know, everything was happening then so we just sort of had to mm. have the time to get it out there but with projects like wise miles i guess this stuff sort of starts happening when work's a bit quiet mm. and we have these ideas and then we have time to sort of you know think about the branding and edit the audio and that sort of stuff but a lot of the time we've found they start when work's a bit quiet and right. then we get put on a pitch or work gets really busy and it's yeah. super hard to keep it up and not let it just drop off mm. and yeah it's it's definitely hard finding time yeah. unfortunately it does well, if you're super passionate about it you'll find time but a lot of that time means sometimes weekends which yeah is if it's a good idea and you love the idea it doesn't matter you, you'll find time to do it yeah and the good thing about like um been in advertising in the advertising industries you're always constantly surrounded by creative people who you know who, who want to help or they who might have passionate. they might be passionate about it they might have ideas so um that kind of helps us as well yeah like working like we've we're surrounded by creativity which yeah. kind of you know pushes you to kind of keep being creative but I think like what helps with an ongoing mm. thing like this is also setting aside time like one morning a week well Andrew right. works better at night I work better in the morning but just sort of setting aside this time every week or so to dedicate she to will that. literally like put stuff in my calendar yeah like, creative thinking like, yeah, just yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm his um, agent right literally or else I will yeah yeah so she's very good with time management yeah right I guess that's sort of what award school teaches you too, because yeah. Yeah. that whole thing happens outside of work. So you're, it's the first time for me where I was sort of juggling a full-time job and mm. 
having this other responsibility mm. creatively, yeah. like outside of work, and it sort of teaches you to make time, like when you have to. Yeah, totally. Well, maybe that's a good time actually to kind of segue into some of the other side projects, um, other things that you do. You donate your time yeah. to Creative Mornings. Yeah. Um, and also Young Bloods. Yeah. Um, can you tell people just a little bit about maybe just a little bit about those things before we move on to the next project? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so Creative Mornings, I would recommend to everyone. It's one morning a month usually it's always the you should know this the the last friday I last think. friday of the month uh and it's basically it happens before work and it's just a morning where there's a speaker on who speaks about a chosen topic and everyone just sort of comes and it's all free and you hear the lecture you get a free breakfast free coffee and it's just a great place to like meet creative people and network and just sort of be inspired. Mm. And then Young Bloods is more specifically for people under the age of 30 in advertising. And it's an industry body that throws events for, yeah, young people like under the age of 30. And so they're educational events, networking events, mm. uh, and it's just a great way to meet other young people in the creative industry and learn and socialize. Mm. And yeah. That's cool. How important do you think you. both of you, like question for both of you before, again, I'm just excited to talk about this stuff. Um, <laughs> but how important do you think it is like community? You were talking before about um, because you're working in an advertising agency, you have these other talented people that you can lean on, yeah. you know, when this idea <clears throat> and things had to happen. So, uh, you know, it takes a village kind yeah. of thing. Like a lot of people contributed to make something happen. Yeah. Um, greater than the sum of our parts and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, how important is community in that sense as well? Really important. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like I think not only in terms of having people collaborate and help you, mm. but also just sort of validating ideas. Right. and having creative people around you to help you like make the idea better. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the times, you know, we will come up with an idea and we invest all this time into it and because we know the idea and we're attached to it doesn't mean other people are going to get that idea straight away. Right. So it's good to kind of like, which is why it's great in advertising or any creative environment, is like, if you've got an idea, we can share it with people and if they get it, it's good, you know. As long as everyone can understand your idea, you yeah. can kind of under, under something good. So yeah. we kind of like test proof all our ideas before we just do them. You know, do you get it? Does this idea make sense yeah. to you? Mm. Which I think is important. Yeah. And I think like if you're not at an agency, then that's where things like Creative Mornings and Young Bloods yeah. are so great because right. you can meet people who would collaborate with you or are willing to like chat about your idea and help you and stuff. Hmm. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Um, well, let's move on to another one of these projects that um, did stick or is sticking, um, which is Polar Melts. So, yeah. um, and again, everybody, uh, in, if you want to ask questions, or I'll continue asking my own questions um, in the chat room, um, you can log in with your Adobe ID um, and give us a shout out. So, let's talk about Polar Melts. Cool. Do you want to? Well, I guess. Polar Melts came out of, originally the idea came from a brief that we were working on for a specific client at work. Mm -hmm. And we just sort of thought this of this idea and while it wasn't necessarily right for the brief that we were working on, the more we thought about it, we just sort of didn't want to put it in the bottom drawer. We wanted to actually do it because we loved it. Uh, so I guess, you know, climate change is something that we're really passionate about. and. We saw this data when it came out showing the sea ice concentration and how it mm -hmm. was in huge decline. And we just sort of got thinking, like, how could we show this shocking data in a way that the generation that will be impacted, like kids, kids. and people our age, how do we show it in a way that's super easy to understand and engaging for kids? So do you want to talk yeah, about that? Yeah, so the idea was polar melts and essentially what polar meant polar melts is that it takes all that really complicated data and it just puts simplifies. It, it simplifies it in its most purest form and actually puts it as markings on, uh, paddle pop stick. on a paddle pop stick. So mm. if you're a kid and, and you got one of these, you can, as the as the ice is melting or, or as, as you're eating away, that you can actually see the markings of how much year by year. Um, the ice has melted over the years and eventually where it's going to get. So we just thought it was like a nice, simple, interactive way that kids could understand what it is. But it's, it's also like a we thought it could be like a really interesting conversation start, especially for parents. You know, we uh, we would have loved for these well one day to be available at like canteens or um, sports canteens or, or movie cinemas. The zoo. The zoo. Yeah. So you know, if you're a parent and you buy your kid one of these, you know, it's a good top. It's a good way to start the conversation with them and let them know 
what these markings mean. Mm. Um, but for us, one of the main reasons why we didn't want to just throw this idea away is because we knew that we could achieve this very easily. It's just a paddle pop stick. It was a, yeah. it was a big idea that can be done in a really cheap, cost-effective way, mm. um, which is something we're kind of looking into now. Yeah. I guess, like, this project, this side project or whatever is super different from Wise Miles and Swipe Rights because they live on the internet. So it was just a matter of finding the time to brand it and yeah. create it and then put it out there and then it just sort of works on its own. But yeah. with Polar Melts, it does require a financial investment. So we're sort of at that stage now, which, you know, is you will find like yeah, the case a lot of the time it. with side projects, like making that commitment to manufacturing or, you know, investing in it. And so I guess with Polar Melts, we're at that stage now where we love the idea, it's fleshed out, we have a manufacturer, and it's a case of just taking the leap and doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, we love this idea. Yeah. Um, we just need to make this one happen, really. Right. And yeah. so what would be the next step? You know, talking about, like, financial, like, is it getting in touch with Paddle Pop or...? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish. <laughs> we sort of have thought a lot about, you know, do we do it with... A climate change organization right but what it's tricky with not-for-profits mm. because a lot of the time they can't just fork out money for an idea like this yeah. right so then do we approach a corporation to you know give us a bit of resource to help with the distribution and that sort of thing yeah. so yeah it's important for this one that we find the right partner that aligns with it mm. but I think we're sort of we've sort of decided to just do it ourselves for now yeah which is, you know, part of this whole side hustle thing is, you know, the, the obviously there's only two of us, there are going to be barriers. But we try not to get caught up in logistics. Like if we, there's a good idea and let's not think about there's the hurdles. There's always a way. <laughs> let's, just, let's just do what we can f first and like see, you know, if, if there's people we know or... You know, you will find like a lot of the time, uh, almost every time, like there will be people who want to help you. Yes, yeah, like creative yeah. people. Yeah, creative people just get excited about good ideas. Yeah. And mm. I know, like I've helped out so many friends, and like you have too. And you will always find people who will want to help you if with it, something. Yeah, especially if it's a good idea and it's something that they um, they're passionate about. Yeah, people will people will help, especially especially when it's things like you know climate change and like game like marriage equality and stuff like people want to be able to contribute to something that they're passionate about and if yeah. you've already got a great idea and have a way of doing it then people will never say no like they will yeah. always want to help you out and that was the case with swipe rights and polar melts like we've had some great people helping yeah. us out and like finding manufacturers and that mm. sort of yeah, thing yeah definitely but yeah it's just about like ultimately it comes down to just being able to pre being prepared to tell people about the idea Right, and not yeah. just holding it close. And the more you talk about it and the more you tell people, the easier it will be to actually make it. Yeah. Because people will help you. Yeah, definitely. Pitching your idea to people yeah. is a good way, I guess, to suss out if yeah. your idea resonates or even if it just makes mm. sense. Yeah. And I don't want to plug Creative Mornings again, but <laughs> we actually have a little bit before the main talk now called the Side Hustle 60, where right. it's 60 seconds where anyone can just that, get up. So oh, really? Cool. It's cool. I've been there for that one. Yeah, that's cool. Where, yeah, yeah, you literally just get up and you have 60 seconds to pitch your idea. Mm. And I guess the idea is because the whole audience is the Sydney creative community, mm. like you, it's the perfect way to find people to help you. Yeah. So... And yeah. that's, that's a particular art, isn't it? Like, it's not only to, to try to convince someone that your idea is good, but also the more you practice that, the more you realise, actually, do I have a really good idea? Can I yeah. explain it in a short amount of time? Exactly. We always say, if you can explain your idea in a sentence, you're halfway there. Like, but, yeah, mm. polar melts was kind of tricky polar because it does sound kind of complicated when yeah. we were explaining it. So mm. that's sort of An why idea like this, up. which is why we kind of wanted to do, like, a simple animation, which kind of... You see the ice melting, you see the markings, you, you, mm. you get it, you, you get what it is. So, you know, which is why as a designer, it, it's been really helpful for our partnership because if we got an idea that we want to show a client or we want to show people, it, we can just uh, mock it up on Photoshop, Illustrator and just show it to them and they can visually see it yeah. um, mm. as clear as possible. And when it's mocked up and it feels like a thing more than just an idea on a page, mm. like when it looks like something tangible and it's really easy to understand then you get buy-in yeah right yeah so yeah very good mm. um yeah it's like an image speaks a thousand words yeah. and all that sort That's, of stuff it's true you said yeah. it
Um, but the words are important. The words, are also, are. The words are also very important. that's my job. It's like 50%. <laughs> it's like 50%. Um, so uh, how, do, how do you guys, maybe you're too young, but how do you deal with burnout? I, I got burnout last year. Right. Where I had a problem saying no to things, mm -hmm. like a lot of creative people, oh. and I just had way too much on my plate. Like I was working like full-time, doing like wise miles and then I had an Instagram called yeah. the unicorn project where I was profiling like women in tech then I was like working on an interior design startup and then like doing young bloods and creative mornings and it literally got to the point where I'm like I cannot do all of this because it's right. not even fun anymore mm. and so that for me like dealing with burnout it's just stripping back um, everything that you're doing and sort of prioritizing what you actually like just take a holiday just or take just a take a holiday <laughs> that's what I do I yeah. it's probably a bad habit of mine where you can vouch for me on this i will work and work and work and work and then i'll just go on like a big holiday mm. for like once a, a year for like once a year so you kind of like wipe the slate clean yeah and then yeah. yeah i yeah just burn myself out till i'm like a zombie then i go on a holiday and i come back and just do it again <laughs> which is probably not the right thing to do but uh sleep is is generally a good, a good thing um, yeah I think also like when it feels like there's too much weight on your shoulders with just a side project, say, right. yeah. just find people to help you with yeah. it mm. and that say sort something. of thing. Don't go it like, alone. It's the same, yeah. it's the same in possible. our industry. Like if, we, which is, if we're kind of slammed with work, we're encouraged to, you know, put your hand up. Just mm. It's getting too much because you work better with a clear mind, especially yeah. when you're trying to be creative. Um, and as soon as things start to feel like a chore, yeah. then you know that like we you work, we, need to do something. Sometimes I find I work better when I don't work at work, like when I'm not in the office. Mm. Like we'll go work at a cafe or mm. in a park or just somewhere. Even that stuff itself is kind of a good way. At least if you're working, you're kind of doing it somewhere that's not amongst all the chaos, Yeah, which can sometimes wear, um, burn you out as well because you've you got like 50 people or sometimes yeah. all at the same time just like... But yeah. I think, yeah, beyond side hustles, yeah. like burnout in advertising in general mm. is pretty yeah. Yeah. common. <laughs> and you'll find a lot of people just like 10 years and five years into their career, they just quit it's advertising. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Bur like just anticipating burnout and preventing it so is very important. So, Phoebe, just, you know, keep Same that in Phoebe. mind um, yeah. when you, if, if you're considering entering the advertising industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, creativity, like, you can't turn it off. And so right. you're always going to be wanting it's, to... It's Yeah, it's the thing with, like, our job. It's not like a nine-to-five yeah. thing. Like, you, mm. your work, whether it's a, a job or a side hustle, is as good as the amount of hours you put into it or as as much as you want it to be. So there's not like... There's no limit. The limit does not exist. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Which is, yeah. It's, it's bad. Very good. Um, so I think we're, we're going to maybe bring up your webpage. You guys have a combined Chloe and yes. Andrew yes. URL. And I think... It's we called Clandrew. Called Clandrew. Yeah, it makes <laughs> no sense, but that's our name. Um, so this is, yeah. This it's is, just, yeah, a portfolio of the favourite things we've done together. Yeah, so we've... <sighs> do a lot of work in advertising but we, we tend to try and show the work we're most proud of in terms of yeah. um, in, from an idea point of view uh, we've got all our side hustles on there as well swipe rice is on there we need to put wise moles on there once we have that's in the shape that we want it to be uh, but this you know this is kind of like our hub of everything we do not just work mm. um, and just looking at it like you see everything that advertising actually includes these days, which are really interesting, like from a design point of view. Like yeah. it's no longer, like you'll rarely see just a press ad or a print ad, like in, the, oh, do you want to talk about yeah, this Yeah, like we had a, uh, we got a brief from the Australian Turf Club, which is all in, like the horse racing. And they were like, we want to, what's a really interesting way we can show um, Australians that when you come at, when you spend a day at the races, there's so much more than horse racing. There's mm. there's fashion, there's food, um, there's music, and um, we kind of had like this really interesting idea of like what if we because we love tech and we thought you know this could be a really opportunity to um, use a traditional um, almost like almost like not old school but the, you think of horse racing you think of it's it's been around for ages it's it's, mm. it's quite an old australian tradition so we wanted to you know what's a really cool innovative idea we can bring in to kind of refresh this brand and what people think of it so we had this idea called the trojan hill which is a shoe where every feature in the shoe um is based on like an aspect of the races like for example um 
it's dance support. It's got like this really high tech, interesting padding. The the actual um, the the patterns on the top or the textures you can actually interchange them. So you can see there. So oh, you can wow. swap out because the races has different looks. They got the the Moet Day, which is gold. They got the TAB Day, which is green. The Colgate Day, which is red. So we thought that's a really interesting way to show different styles of the shoe. So you can interchange them. Had a really cool feature, uh, which is if you tap your heel three times, it books you in an Uber. From where you're standing. It was called No Place Like Home, yeah. that feature. <laughs> That's very cool. But, yeah. yeah, this project was super fun because we weren't designing an ad. Yeah. It was a shoe. And so we did this where mm. we designed it with Lady Gaga's shoe designer. And then the next project was creating a dress for Neutrogena, which changed colour when you needed to reapply sunscreen. Right. And so we just sort of found that we would... It was just crazy. Like, you couldn't have predicted, like, going into advertising that you would be creating this sort of stuff, and that's what's so great about advertising. Yeah, it's like mm. you if any normal... A normal person would look at this and they would not say that's an ad. Yeah. Know? yeah. Which is the cool thing about advertising. It's yeah. like you don't know... It's all about your idea. An idea can be anything. Like we were saying before, it can live in any shape, any form. And, um, and it's such a good time to get into advertising because more and more this is what clients are wanting mm. as opposed to your traditional TV ad. So, yeah, it's just... Yeah, it's a great range of stuff we've been able to work on. Yeah. Every single one has been, like, a great challenge mm. from a creative point of view. Cool. We even did a music video. Show us the music video. So this one was the creative challenge was how do we get more girls in high school interested in engineering, enrolling in it at university. Right. And so we we spoke to a lot of like young girls like in focus groups and stuff and what they're really passionate about is music. So what we did was we teamed up with this artist who they all loved called Nervo who have like won Grammys and stuff. They're really cool. And we created the music video for their new song but everything in the music video was made by an engineer. And yeah. as they appeared in the video, you could click on them and sort of learn about how engineers helped create it. So oh, the wow. whole idea was just showing girls that engineers create everything like in our world, yeah. not just robots. Exactly. And, sort of and the purpose of the music video was kind of um, uh, uh, something that was you know, tapping into their interests. So we knew girls love this band. They, um, so we wanted to use their music video. We thought a music video and engineering were like, two contrasting things right but putting engineering into something that's really cool yeah, like a music video into, was a really interesting sort of way. like polar melts yeah where it's like talking to kids through something that they love which is an icy pole yeah that's that same sort of strategy i guess exactly um, so yeah that was a super so that fun was, that was fun on. and then i guess you know we've got then you we've got our more traditional stuff which is the stuff we did for amazon which are the tv ads um, so it, it, it ranges. A big mm. range. Um, we, t <laughs> we did dancing donuts for Krispy Kreme. Everyone loves it. Of course. <laughs> that was fun. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, I guess. So when you're working on some of these projects, like, uh, are you coming up with the strategy and the initial kind of ideas and then, you know, joining in with people that are in the team? Are you attaching to other agencies to get these things done? How does it actually work? We work closely with the strategy department, mm -hmm. yeah. so they, which is where I started originally. So they sort of think of the strategy. So, like, you know, who are we talking to? How are we going to talk to them? What's, like, the main thing we're going to mm -hmm. say? Mm -hmm. Then they give us that brief and we think of the creative idea and how we're going to do it and that sort of thing. And then we work closely with production and the design department yeah, to actually bring, bring the life. idea to life, which is so an it's a lot itself. of collaboration, mm. a lot of co collaboration, which is it's it's really good because for us, like, a, you know, we're creatives and we specialize in ideas, but you get a designer or someone in production who can add ideas to their part of that project. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a really advertising in general it's everyone it's almost like everyone's got a bit of creativity to them and mm. everyone uses it in their own unique way to bring out like the best of a project but then the creative department like uh, we're really encouraged to think of proactive ideas just ourselves like without mm. the strategy right. department so just on our own if we think of a great yeah. idea agencies really encourage that and mm. if they love it then they will just pitch that straight to a client and a lot of the time that right. gets made too yeah so yeah it's very dynamic. So and I do think, like, you know, where the market's headed, more and more we do have to collaborate with other agencies too yeah. and that sort of thing. And even individual people, yeah. specialists. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. definitely, especially from, like, an innovation in a tech Yeah, like the Trojan Heel. Yeah. We collaborated with a tech company called Airbag who sort of did the tech element yeah. and then 
Kira Goody, who's Lady Gaga's designer, designed that. Like, that was a really interesting collaboration. Yeah. Hearing all their ideas and letting them bring their skills yeah, and their skills. values to it was um, really interesting. But, yeah, tech is kind of like an interesting platform at the moment because we can do so much with tech now. We can tell stories. We can show things. Mm. We can do interesting things. So uh, with us, we, we kind of... Uh, we, we love all our side hustles and stuff, but we like that whole tech field for us is yeah, like innovation. a real sweet spot mm. yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And out of out of kind of all the projects, like side projects, yeah. are there any that haven't gone ahead? That surely there must be some in the graveyard of ideas. Goonbag. There is one. We um, had this idea. It's actually a really sad story because it could have been amazing. Mm. Uh, so we had this idea. Oh, of Amanda, you 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 literally just asked the same question that I just asked. <laughs> so I just want to give you a shout out, uh, yeah. Amanda S. What's your favorite project that hasn't happened yet? Oh, so maybe that's so, the second part. Of, yeah. So Amanda. <laughs> we had this idea, Great so question. Google Cardboard, for anyone who doesn't know, is Google Google's virtual reality headset, so it's a really cheap, just like, think of it as half a cardboard box that you put up to your eyes and you put your phone in and it becomes a virtual reality headset. So we had this idea of what if we made a goon box virtual reality headset? So the idea was you would drink your wine out of the casket and then cask. Car. Not a casket. <laughs> and then wow. it turns into a virtual reality headset when you're done with your wine and you just put your phone in after a couple of drinks and you just have this wild virtual reality experience. So we created, we designed it and like mocked it up and made it look like an actual thing. And then we started a Kickstarter, thought it was the best idea ever, set the target for like two and a half thousand dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. Wow. That's all we got. From Almost my sister. If that doesn't say bad idea, I don't know what. But, and we thought it was great. And that was the one case where we didn't actually test the idea with anyone else. We just got super excited about yeah. it, thought it was a great idea, still do think it's a great idea. <laughs> right. No one steal it. Um, and it just it was a flop but yeah, yeah. it so was a flop and everything goes ahead no, that man. was a flop but that's kind of like the outlook on that is that our attitude has always been like if we like it fail we think fast. it's a good idea just do it if you fail fail if it's good it's good yeah um, you're, you're better off just trying something than not trying and never knowing yeah. what it could have been so for and the goon box it was a it's better that we got the idea out as yeah. opposed to actually having them manufactured and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Horrible one and people were, what buying them. Yeah. So it only yeah. cost your sister five bucks in your yeah. guys' time. Shout yeah. out if she's watching yeah. this. I'm sure she got that back if yeah. it didn't go ahead. Um, so we are getting to the end of the show. So if anyone has any final um, questions, but I'm going to ask a final question. Usually at the end, we ask um, the guest if they have any kind of parting advice. Um, so both working for a really cool. Uh, agency mm -hmm. um, got all these interesting side projects happening part of the community everything's awesome um, <laughs> yeah. certainly, on the outside, certainly on the outside um, but what, what would you say to people that are aspiring to kind of do what you do um, whether just the side project thing or advertising side of things I would just say hustle like be a hustler um, constantly a, a, a good thing to do is always come up with ideas mm. and share those ideas um, whether you want to share your ideas with agencies or, or just people, but constantly be creative. And if you want something, especially a career in advertising, just hustle. Like I yeah. know when we finished awards school, we um, we actually didn't do all that great in awards school. Mm. We had a book, but our thing was, all right, well, we've learnt from awards school. Let's come up with our own ideas. We were just very mm. enthusiastic. And we just like would go away and, you know, you know, two to three weeks, just come up with these really cool ideas, our own ideas. And then we'd just like email every creative director, every ECD and just go, what do you think of this idea? We're doing this. Do you like this? And you just keep hustling and hustling because mm. when, when you hustle, eventually you just get attention. Yeah. And right. And people, you have to be annoying. Like You have uh, to be annoying. <laughs> as weird as it sounds, you have to be annoying. Like I annoyed, can I swear on here? <laughs> I annoyed Probably the not. crap. <laughs> we'll, we'll stay away. We'll stay away from I annoyed the crap out of our creative director and eventually uh, that's what got us the job. Was, he, was that Glenn? That wasn't Shout Glenn. Out to Glenn. Shout out to Glenn. It wasn't Glenn though. Um, it was Russ. Mm -hmm. um, Russ Tucker. He, he. We would always just constantly send him ideas, and mm -hmm. eventually he was just like, "I either have to shut you up and give you guys a job, or, or move countries. Or, or move countries. <laughs> yeah. Changes changes his email address. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think like yeah, a great piece of advice that I remember we were told in awards school by Steve Cole, who's an ACD here in Sydney. He said, I remember he was like. If you're a junior trying to get into an agency, you need that. So there's 
attitude, ability, and ambition. And ability is the least important when attitude you're trying to get anything. in. Yeah. Right. So as long as you have the ambition and the attitude, then that's all you really need. Yeah. And attitude it's so can true. build talent. Yeah. And ambition. And you just mm. learn once you get the job. Yeah. We've been. We're still. We're learning yeah. all the time. Um, yeah. When we came into TBWA, we were. I didn't even know how to take a screenshot. Yeah, we were kind of like... It's a designer's job. Yeah. (laughs) It's your job. Yeah. But yeah, I guess like my piece of advice would be just do it. Just do it. (laughs) Literally. With side hustles and like, you know, putting your name out there for like jobs and opportunities and, you know, networking. It's so important Mm. to just do it. It's like you've got nothing to lose. Like email that person for coffee, like start your side project, like apply for the job like you have nothing to lose you have and to, yeah you got to get attention you literally you have, have to, to scream get and shout. attention like i remember when i was trying before award school when i was wanting to get into advertising i made a meme cv where it was because memes were cool at the time and so i just put my entire cv in memes and then pedestrian found it and wrote about it and like then people were getting in yeah. touch with me it was so random wow. just from doing that yeah. one thing mm. and so yeah i think it's really important just to not be afraid to be annoying and just get your name out there it's good advice yeah, yeah. I just like it. do it i can be really annoying, I'm annoying. Um, that's good <laughs> <laughs> um well so that just about does it for the live stream today thank you everyone for the questions in there but if people want to find out more about you two mm. together and individually what was that url maybe people want to take a, uh, some comments about yes yeah, so our website is called clandrew.com which i'll spell it because it's quite weird um c-h-l-a-n-d-r-e-w.com and you can yeah, that just has everything it's got everything we've got our emails our instagram our linkedin and just get Stalk in touch us. and annoy us and be really be annoying really yeah. annoying. be annoying like <laughs> chloe <laughs> well thank you everybody for tuning in um thank you chloe and andrew and if you're watching the replay thank you for checking out the replay um we'll be back uh, this time in two weeks with another adobe apac live thank you everybody for coming thank you thank you Bye. Do 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 do.